sitting like that. I just use two hands. This is awesome. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. I just wanted to show you uh, this wild garden that we've been planting at my buddy uh, Walters here for about five years now. We got all kinds of lamb quarters, which is everywhere through here, Finn. <laughs> and uh, penny crest, which is a really good spice, as you know. I love my penny crest, and it's really taking over through here as well. So we almost have enough penny crests here now to uh, almost manufacture our own spices. And I'm going to show you over here we've been planting domestic and wild asparagus. Wild asparagus from the Okanagan of BC. We've been planting here for years and we have lots of that as well. So we have enough now that we can start pickling asparagus. We give seeds away to some of the local neighbors who have planted them as well. And it's really doing good in this garden here. Even though things kind of look like they're getting taken over, uh, we don't mind that because uh, these are the plants we want anyway. So right on. So you can see how big some of the uh, asparagus, obviously it's too late to harvest. But we have a lot of big plants that have actually seeded themselves. There's all kinds of little asparagus. The asparagus is doing great. But the thing is, like, uh, you know, I said this comes from the Okanagan. And they had a problem in the Okanagan years ago because people were foraging the asparagus. And you have to, you can't pick every sprig off the asparagus plant or you're going to kill the plant. So usually what we do is we'll leave the first biggest one and then you can harvest the ones that come after that. Because that's the main support for the root system is the first sprig usually is the biggest. So you want to leave one or two of the big sprigs or you can kill the plant. And that's what almost happened in the Okanagan of BC. The foragers were collecting all the sprigs and it was dying off and uh, almost to the point of extinction in some areas. So we got a bigger one here. There's some more here. Little guys all tucked in everywhere. The more you look, the more you see. All kinds of it through here. And then over here we've got uh, horseradish. All kinds of horseradish as well. And then in the pot here we've got some domestic that we've been kind of mixing with the wild asparagus. So you can see how successful that the wild garden is. So I'm looking forward to collecting some of the penny crests for spice. And we've got lamb quarters uh, most of the summer. But the asparagus is doing good. Now I don't know what variety of asparagus this is that comes from the Okanagan. Because there's lots and lots of different varieties of even wild asparagus. So I'm going to have to try to figure it out if any of you know what variety might be in the Vernon, B.C. area of wild asparagus. Maybe leave a comment below. But me, I am not sure what variety these are. I just know they're good and they're doing well. And here we have a solar heating panel. Solar. And this uh, year round will keep the water boiling. So we go into a bit of a solar project here as well. I'll show you, I mean the water gets boiling hot. So now we got it on and this water, oof, got scalding man. Look at the steam. So, trying to get a temperature reading right? Yeah. It's hot, I know that. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> I had this idea back in Patagonia of turning my recurve into a crossbow. And so that's what I want to do. Um, you know, by season three, I think there was only four of us that had even brought a bow. Nowadays, all ten participants always bring a bow. And... Uh, I had this idea, but what happens, uh, you get hungry, you get tired, and you go in with great expectations, you're going to do this, do that, 
And as time goes on, you lose interest in the project because you're hungry and you're weak and you lose interest. But I really wish I would have made this or tried this, even though there wasn't much to hunt in Patagonia. Uh, the wild boars, I never even saw one. But I'm hoping one of the uh, future participants on the Alone Show will see this video and copy this idea and maybe even get a big game animal with it. Um, like I say, I've had this idea for quite a long time. Turning my recurve into a crossbow. Pretty sure I'm going to get it to work. The trigger system might be a little tricky, but uh, you remember Dave Nessa towards the end, he was even having trouble stringing his bow. So if you haven't eaten for a week or you're weak, are you going to be able to get a shot and hold it? But this uh, thing that I'm going to design here is going to do all that for us. I just got to figure out a trigger. All right, well, we'll go find some wood that's going to be suitable and get on the project. So I'm just looking um, for something that I can use. And uh, a lot of this wood is just dry rotted. Um, hopefully I can find something without tracking through here too much. I'm just doing this around camp. I'm just going to use items that I actually had when I was in Patagonia, like a saw. Uh, I've got a knife. I had an axe and paracord, and those are the items I'm going to use to uh, try to build this crossbow. We'll find our piece. So you can see this big old fur. And uh, like I say, a lot of the wood around here is just dry rotted. I need something with some strength. And uh, this stuff is just, I don't know, punky. This breaks. But I will find the piece I need. I see lots of good stuff that would work for me, but it's not going to be strong enough. There's a neat little uh, hole in the stump here, and it goes way in. And it's a... Uh, hollow log you could probably it's almost big enough you could make a shelter inside this big log it's hollow at this end as well probably could make a shelter or crawl in there and make something to sleep in got a piece here i don't know if it's going to be solid enough either and then i got this big piece here it is more solid but it's going to be pretty heavy this one's light enough. Either which one. I mean, maybe at this point I'll take both. And uh, I'll see if this is punky in the middle. pretty heavy we're gonna have to do a lot of a lot of whittling it down for sure I think this might work I want this to be less than half the weight it is now so I want a butt end here most of these branches can go And then I want to hold it like this. And probably my string will go up in here somewhere. The lighter the better. And I'll probably end up splitting it in half as well. Not the best stump I'm using. It's all rotten and falling apart. Yeah, this is a really bad stump to be using. It's just garbage. And hopefully with my knife, we can actually split this. I'm hoping. Good catch, eh? Okay, well, a little bit more. But I don't want to lose the strength at this end in particular because this is where my uh, bow is going to be. I 
Okay, so now I just got to go to the next notch I cut here and down right to pretty much the end. I gotta, I still want to lose quite a bit of weight, but not the strength at this end. That went nice once I get past the knot there. This is where my trigger is going to go. And my bow is going to sit here and I measured the distance and it looks about right to have almost maximum pressure or pull on the bow. It's going to take a bit of work, there's no doubt of that. It's a good way to break a knife too, but these joker knives, they seem to be able to take the abuse. Not many knives you can just hammer on with a hammer or a hatchet. And uh, <laughs> chisel out pieces of wood. I uh, broke my knife in Patagonia doing this, making my raft. Probably just be using the hatchet, but it's working. Just going to clean it up a bit. It's getting a lot lighter now too. I also want to make it narrower where my hand might be. I have this that I can hold on to, but I could rest this on a stump and then I want a hand grip up here as well. So I'm just uh, going to make a narrow spot for me to grab. And the more I take off, the lighter it'll be without... I don't want to take so much that I compromise the strength either. I got a chunk of wood here and what I want to do with it is make a wedge shape and uh, my bow will attach to this I'll tie it on with paracord and then I want to do a dovetail and get it at the end of my mechanism so I'm just gonna try to get the right shape for the dovetail Hopefully it'll be strong enough. We got pretty much the right shape at this end. The tough part is going to be the trigger. Go there. And get this tied on. It's pretty much flush with the rest of it. I can still trim this thing up quite a bit if I want. So I can see, once I get my bow tied on here, that this here, I have to take more off because the string is touching it. And then I'll, this is where my trigger will be. And the string is going to hook behind here, I'm going to figure out that yet. But yeah, I got to whittle some more away because the string is going to hit. Okay, there we go. So. It's all secured on here. I've got a thinner part that I carved out for my hand. I just have to be aware to hold it like this. I mean, if my thumb's up like this, I'll get hit by the string. So I have to hold it like this, or I can hold it like this. And this whole setup, I can hold in one arm. It's not that heavy. I still got to do the trigger, but then basically, we're just going to... The trigger is going to be back here, and the string is going to go on here, like that. See, that's ready to go. But I got to figure out my trigger. All right, it's coming together. This is barbecuing some chicken up. It's kind of like an everyday schedule for me cooking on the fire, um, as you can imagine. But. Uh, the project's coming together, I'm pretty happy. <clears throat> I took the string off because tomorrow I gotta figure this trigger out. Um, I would like to uh, just take the arrow, make sure it's gonna be straight in line where I put the trigger. So still a few things to figure out, but hey, it's gonna be awesome when this thing shoots and I don't have to 
hold the string waiting for a shot and all that and uh, that's basically the whole idea of this project is to uh, show people a way to turn your bow into a crossbow can't really see me just using the headlights of the truck because can't see me otherwise and hmm so I uh tomorrow I'm gonna get that uh, mechanism I don't know what I should call it going hmm that chicken's so good on a fire kind of reminds me of frog legs but anyways gonna head to bed and uh, tomorrow we're gonna get that thing shooting hopefully I'll see you in the morning okay I, I took the string off the bow just to try to line my arrow up and uh, I was thinking I have to stay to the left side of this or well the right side where I am but uh, close to the edge is gonna be straight now I was thinking of having my trigger up here but that's bad because it's gonna be shooting down and my string will probably hit here and glance off and throw the arrow everywhere so that's no good I, I'm kind of figuring where my trigger has to be is close to the edge and that's straight I have to take probably almost two inches off the back here and then make my trigger because for it to be straight and straight this way that's about where I have to be for my trigger so I'll mark the spot and we'll start trying to design our trigger <laughs> Okay, so now I got my height figured. I want to make sure that I leave enough wood to hold, but I have to whittle away some of this. I've got a crack here I really don't like because it's right where I want my trigger. And so I may have to move the bow that way a bit and move my trigger more to the center. Yeah, that crack is really bothersome, actually. Right where I didn't need a crack to be. Okay, I cut a spot for the string. I mean, obviously the arrow goes on the on this side of the knock, and I have a spot for my arrow, but I have to take a lot of this out that's gonna hold the string. And then my trigger will go underneath the string and lift it up. I left this little chunk here, my arrow, my knock on that side, I'm going to have to take this piece out and that's where my trigger will be. But now I have room for my string. So the first thing to do, restring the bow and see if this little nub of wood is going to hold the string first of all or is it going to break it right off. Then I'll have to come up with a new plan. I noticed what could be a major problem for me. The bow is not sitting proper on my cross member here. It's twisted and not high enough on this end. And that could be major, and I'll show you in a second. This string, if I was to shoot it, would probably come right off the bow because it's, it's twisted. Okay, so this side of the bow is perfectly fine because the notch for our string in the arm itself is perfectly in the groove, so that's fine. Now you see the difference, eh? This string is coming out of the, the notch or the groove in the arm. So I'm going to have to, see, I have to twist the bow probably by putting a wedge here and retying it because it's going to come out of that groove as soon as I shoot it because the arm is twisted. Yeah, it's just one of those things like when you come up with an idea you're gonna have setbacks and it's good I noticed that because I bet you anything the string would have come off first time I shot it but 
I've kind of got my idea for the trigger, so I'll keep working on that. Retie this first, put that shim, and get the bow twisted to where the strings are straight in the grooves. I'll have to trim the, the shim off. I put a little one on this side. It seems that it's all straight now when I pull. Now I'm going to check and see if our little notch will hold the string. By the time I get it back to here, it's basically at full capacity. Might have been nice to have where my trigger is going to be a couple inches closer. So that's full capacity. But that's good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a groove about the same width as where my string is going to be so I can put my trigger in this groove. I just don't want to damage where my uh, string is going to be held on. I want to cut a notch across here where I can put a round stick and then basically I'll have a leverage point for another stick to pry the string up. Okay, it's getting hot out here. I want to be careful with the uh, small side though because it's split. Oh, broke off. Darn it. Yeah, I thought that might happen. Well, I'll have to figure something else out for that. It's a problem with using cracked wood. I'll have to try to figure out a way to repair that. I just went and carved this. Uh, I didn't show all of that, but I mean, you can see what I've got here. And basically, this will go under the string. I cut a notch for my piece that holds the string. And then a round stick. I'm going to have to tie this, and that's how I'll rectify the piece that broke. And uh, it'll sit like that under the string. Like that. And then I just pry it, pry the string up. Except for tying my round stick under here and tying this to that, this is done. This goes underneath far enough. Our arrow is staying between our knock and this point. I just carved a little groove here for the string. And that way it lifted things up so that I can get my mechanism underneath because I was having trouble getting it far enough underneath. Now I can. So tie her stick, this stick to there. And I think she's going to work like a charm. Okay, I loaded it up. I tied my trigger on. So we're going to take a shot. I got the arrow in it. I got the target real close. I mean, I don't even know if the trigger is going to work. So we're going to give it a shot here and uh, see. We'll try to hit the target and see if our trigger is going to work. Oh, I went low, but it fired. We'll try another one. Right on. Okay, the good thing is the trigger worked and uh, I shot low. But you know, um, when you're trying to load this thing, or like get it set, you uh, don't try to do it from here, pushing back. <laughs> Make sure you pull back. Don't try to push it. That's just a joke. I mean, as if anybody would do something so stupid. A little arrow roulette. Okay, so basically I just use two hands Get it in place. Whoop, the arrow came out, but that's okay. And there. Now I'll just put my arrow in and we'll try another shot. Now I'll see if I can hit the target this time. Well, I got the target. Might take a bit of practice to get used to how to shoot it proper. I was a bit low and a bit right. Maybe if I tip it on a bit of an angle. And look down the arrow better. That's better. So I just tied my, I had to shim this a bit 
But anyway, I just push this and it lifts up enough, releases the string, which sits behind here, and it works, man. See, I like this idea, you can just rest it on a stump, and then it's steady. I'm gonna try to get bullseye. Well, I'm going right, but my height's good. Not a bad shot again. Almost a bullseye. I just want to try a further shot. You can see the target in the back there. And see, like I like, or what I like, is you can just rest it. You can look down the arrow pretty carefully. Let's see with a further shot if I can at least hit the target. Yeah, that's not too much below the bullseye. A little low, but right on. This thing is awesome. So I've uh, been trying some further shots now. And uh, something I'll show you about this here too, is I can, I can actually lean it on an angle too. Like I can shoot it this way, flat. Let's try a shot on the angle. And uh, I'm going for a bullseye at the further target this time. Oh, just about. Okay, well I'm, I'm gonna try a crazy long shot. Like That's more like a distance for a compound bow, not a recurve. But now, I've got this stretched to maximum, I want to try a real long shot, except Finn wants to get in front of the target. Stay out of the way, Finn. Out of the way. You can't be there. Be careful how you set this, though, in case it wants to go off and you're not expecting it to. I like this thing, man. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, well... This will be interesting, because like I say, that's more like compound range, like for a compound bow, or an actual crossbow. But... <laughs> a mosquito in my throat. This will be interesting. Just a little low, but it was right on target. I should try one more and just aim a bit high. Pretty impressed, I'm telling you. And like I say... You can go stalking with it because it's all ready to go. You don't have to wait and hold a shot and hold a shot. But I like this idea of being able to rest on stuff. Oh, almost again, but I think the target's just a little out of range for this bow. But I could put a stronger recurve on here too. Um, this is only my 35 pound. If I put my 45 or my 55 on here, then it would be hitting that target. I just want to try a standing shot at that far target. I haven't tried it standing up yet. And I can put it on an angle. Oh, just to the right of the target. But it was like level with the target. This is awesome! So, I want to uh, thank you for watching. I know not every video uh, can interest everybody But uh, even if you're not interested in the video watch it anyway, you might learn something I'm happy that this worked. I Think in certain situations It would save w when you have no energy You can leave it loaded if you're stalking. I was getting used to the shots and almost got a bullseye and uh, The more I practice the better I'll get but anyway, I'm going to have some other bushcraft uh, projects coming up with some other inventive ideas. It took a couple of days, um, but you know, that's with doing video as well. Um, you know, in a survival situation, you could probably make one in a few hours, whittle it up and make it to work. If you come up with your own ideas, I mean, by all means, make some adjustments to it. And uh, hopefully you found the video interesting. And uh, I want to thank you subscribers, you viewers in general. And I'll see you on the next one.